Ruchem Aboyim. The topic tonight will be on um, something I find very interesting. It's uh, converts. Why convert to Judaism? Um, especially com- Judaism does not go out and proselytize and try to bring converts in. In fact, just the opposite. That we see, in fact, in the story of Ruth, that when Ruth wanted to convert, her mother tried to talk. Her mother-in-law tried to talk her out of it. And according to uh, Jewish law, if someone comes and says they want to become Jewish, what we say is why. You know, we believe that everyone has a place in the world to come, Jew and Gentile alike. So, why become Jewish? In fact. Most of us would love to have the place in heaven. I'm sure the Mother Teresa uh, has merited. If you live your life and you're a righteous Gentile and you believe in God and do what has to be done, you too have a portion in the world to come. So why become Jewish? And it's an interesting phenomenon because those that want to become Jewish seem to have this burning desire. And no matter what you tell them and how bad you try to paint the picture, it just somehow fuels their enthusiasm (laughs) to even do it more. Why? So there has to be something deeper um, as to why someone would want to become Jewish. Um, What's the origin? We all have souls. Everybody, most people acknowledge that fact, that God has given everyone a soul. And we believe that when creation happened, at that moment of creation, everything was created. Even every soul that would be born that would exist in the world to eternity to the coming of the Messiah. In fact, that's one of the reasons why in every political campaign, one of the major issues is abortion. Why is it such a big issue? And the answer is because one of the ways of bringing the Messiah is using up all of those souls. So the side of evil wants abortion, wants people to refrain from having children or abort them. So that that's one way that the Messiah will not come. So based on this belief that all souls were created at the moment of creation, according to Kabbalah, we have a belief that when Adam, first man, sinned by eating the tree of, from the tree of knowledge, somehow, some way, the side of evil was given permission to enter into the storehouse of Jewish souls. Again, Jewish souls are different than non-Jewish souls. We believe, again, that a Jewish soul, not that it's chosen in the sense of being better, although it does have a godly spark that is greater than a Gentile soul, but at the same time, it comes with more responsibility. So there were these Jewish souls that were in the storehouse, so to speak, and Satan was allowed to go into this storehouse after Adam, Adam, first man, ate in the tree of knowledge and steal Jewish souls and put them in Gentile bodies. So what's interesting, I've had the honor and privilege of knowing a certain amount of of converts. And for the most part, they're amazing people. They really get it. They really care. They really study. It's the real deal. Now, there's some who convert for marital reasons, uh, pressure, whatever. And I'm not talking about that. Because the truth of the matter is there are those who always want to join the winning side. They're not really true believers, per se. But I've been honored and privileged, I say, to meet many that are really firm and true believers. And it makes so much sense. Because if you were to go into a storehouse of diamonds, and you were allowed to take anything you want out, (laughs) why wouldn't you pick the most precious of diamonds? You wouldn't pick things that are inferior. You wouldn't take zircon. But what what you would go for is the room, the deepest of all rooms that have the best of all souls. And those are the ones that you would take. So if Satan was allowed to take souls from the storehouse of Jewish souls at the beginning of creation, why not take the best? And the proof of it is, for example, that we know that there are 
certain gerim, certain converts, such as Rabbi Akiva, who was the son of a ger, Rabbi Meir, Onkelos, Antoninus, great individuals. In fact, with Rabbi Akiva, when God gave the Torah through Moshe, he showed Moshe something that didn't seem realistic then, but to us we understand very clearly, a video of all the leaders of all the world, the Jewish nation, throughout history, throughout the whole expanse of the world. And when Moshe saw Rabbi Akiva, he turned to God and said, you have someone like him and you're giving the Torah through me? And God rebuked Moshe and says, I choose who I choose. But Moshe Benu, when he saw Rabbi Akiva, saw him that pristine. And who was he? The son of a ger, the son of a convert. So we see that these souls that were taken were special souls. And we also have another example that not all, sometimes the soul was allowed to be put in a body of a non-Jew and it was a captive in that body and not allowed to have any influence on that body whatsoever. The example given, there were 10 martyrs that we know about that were killed in lieu of the brothers by the Romans. We mention them every time on Yom Kippur in the Musaf, in the, in, the, in the additional prayers. And one of those was the great sage whose name was Hanin ben Trajan. Reb Hanin ben Trajan says of himself that he was a captive in the body of Shechem, the prince who raped Dina, the daughter of Yaakov. And he says that in the Pasuk, in the verse it says, Rechavat Yodayim, his hands were weakened, Rechavat Reish Ches Beis Tov is an acronym for Bechanina Ben Trajan. He said of himself that when Shechem kissed Dina, when you kiss someone, you give from your breath to the other person, that released his soul. And that's one of the Kabbalistic reasons for the whole incident with Dina, for him to be able to, for her to be able to release the soul of Bechanina Ben Trajan that was a captive within the body of Shechem. So, we see that the Torah gives us, and then there's also the story told uh, of the Eishe Shifas Toar. There's a strange halacha, strange law, of, of a man who's in battle, and he sees a non-Jewish woman, and he desires her, that he can take her for a wife. It's very strange. And what we do is there's a debate between the Rambam and the Ramban as to whether he has relations with her there, or whether he has to wait 30 days, and then he can. And he takes her back home, and after 30 days, if he, she, if he wants to marry her, then he can. But the wording there says about this woman, and he has a desire. It should be osa for her, but it says ba in it. See, the Jewish army, especially in olden times, was very unusual because it really was made up of righteous individuals, people with long beards and payas, people that had, in fact, the tribe of God was set to go to battle with wearing their tefillin, their phylacteries on when they, when they went to battle. It was all very spiritual. In fact, someone who had a new house, a new wife, a new field was exempt. So that the coward, because if someone had, had sins that was afraid they would die in battle, they could leave the battlefield. Who stayed? Righteous individuals. So this person, and we believe in this concept of shliach mitzvah, of being a messenger to do a good deed, in the middle of saving the land of Israel, fighting for the nation, while he's doing this great mitzvah, and he's a righteous individual, he sees a non-Jewish woman, and all of a sudden he has a desire for her, which makes no sense. He should be protected while he's doing this mitzvah. Why would he have a desire for a shiksa, for someone who, who he shouldn't desire at all, shouldn't even see? And the answer is, for shock the ball, he has a desire for it, that what he sees inside of, inside of her, because of his elevated spiritual level is a soul that needs to be redeemed, a soul that needs to be brought back. It's interesting when I have been at conversions and have seen converts, one of the things I always say is welcome home. Because they're really coming back. If you stop and think about it, God exiled us because we sinned. And what did he do? He exiled us to the four corners of the earth. So let's get this straight. If we're not religious in the land of Israel, being a, a Jewish unit together, we're going to do a whole lot better being exiled to the four corners of the earth without other Jews around and the influence of the Gentile nations. 
I don't think so. I think it's much tougher. If God wants us to be good, don't take us out of the frying pan into the fire. So why is it that God exiled us to the four corners of the earth, something that was not done to any other nation in the world? And the answer is because of converts. A magnet has no power unless it's close to an object that it has to attract. How do we bring back these souls that need to be brought back to Judaism? These lost souls that were taken by Satan? And the answer is by being exiled to the four corners of the earth. And when we're in these four corners of the earth, all of a sudden, somehow, some way, that magnetism draws this person who for some crazy reason wants to be Jewish, no matter what we tell them, they still want to be Jewish. Why? Because they are Jewish. Because within them is this godly soul that yearns to be redeemed, that yearns to be brought back. It's an interesting thing. The Torah says, how precious is a gear? Agar is the word for stranger, even though he's not really a stranger. But from that we also learn to be nice to anyone who is a stranger in any situation. Because the truth of the matter is to leave everything that you know and to come into a strange religion, a strange language, strange customs, things that you were not brought up with, and to feel this deep love and desire to get close to God in a very unique way. After all, Muslims also believe in God. Christians also believe in God. But yet, not the same thing. And it's interesting. This is why being the chosen people doesn't mean that we're necessarily better. It means we're chosen for a mission. That's what the chosenness is. And the proof is, anyone that wants to become a Jew can. That it's not a club that is locked up only for people that are born to a Jewish mother. But if someone gets it into his mind that he wants to be Jewish and is willing to accept all of the Torah and mitzvahs that were given to the Jews at Mount Sinai, they too can become a Jew. And not only a Jew, but in the full level of any natural born Jew. And even more so. God says 27 times in the Torah to love the ger, to love the convert. In addition to loving the Jew. There's a, there was a story told of the morale of Prague, a great Kabbalist, lived in the 1500s. His, student asked, his students asked him, who will be the ones to bring the Messiah? And of course, the answer would have seemed to have been those really righteous individuals that spend all their time trying to get closer to God. He said no. He said the people that will bring the Messiah will be converts and balchuvas, people that are repentant. You know, I used, to own, I used to own a yacht. All it was was a lot of work. Until people came on board. And then it became a treasure. Watching how they enjoyed it and what it was about. Many times we as Jews forget how precious it is to be Jewish. Until we see someone else who doesn't have to be there. Someone who willingly comes by themselves. And embraces it and holds the Torah. And kisses it. And finds it so precious. And then we realize what a gift we have. And that's what the Maral say. That they're the ones that will bring Mashiach because they bring the love and enthusiasm, this desire to come close to God that we many times forget about. That we just go through it because we've been chosen to do it and we feel like we have to. But that real deep love and desire. It's interesting. An angel can say God's name after three words. Holy, holy, holy. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. A Jew... Normally, a natural born Jew, Shema Yisro, hero Israel, Hashem, God. Ger, Yisro said Baruch, blessed, and then the name of God. And that's why Yisro is in the Torah, to say that not only are we not better than this Gentile world, but we see that that Gentile world has many assets. But when someone wants to be a convert, Yisro wanted the world to see how well we welcome them, and well we should. May God bless us. They continue to light the way for us and help to bring in the coming of Mashiach quickly in our time. Thank you for coming. Have a great Shabbos.